Congressman, thank you so much for your support of The Issue Is. My pleasure. Great to be on your show. All right, what a, what a week uh, for you <laughs> in terms of the news. Uh, we have this, the big news coming out of the House Intelligence Committee is your colleagues, your Republican colleagues, uh, calling for you to resign at a hearing and several of them signing a letter asking for you to resign after we got a portion of the Mueller report from Attorney General uh, Bill Barr. The president talking about you on Sean Hannity. Take a listen. Because he was giving, I mean, horrible, making horrible statements that he knew were false. And frankly, you know, I heard they should force him off the committee or off the committee chair. He should be forced out of office. So what's your response to the president? Any plans to resign? Uh, well, this is uh, a tactic the president has used some time, attacking me on Hannity, attacking me on Twitter. Uh, and sadly, all too often uh, when the president says jump uh, and his reasons in Congress say how high, how high. Uh, hi. Uh, I think when the chapter, this chapter of history is written, uh, it will reserve some of the most damning words for the GOP leadership that when the President of the United States uh, attacked the justice system, denigrated judges based on their ethnic origin, uh, attacked the independence of our uh, justice system itself, designated the press as the enemy of the people, that that GOP leadership was either silent or worse, was complicit. Uh, so these attacks are nothing new, uh, but they're not going to deter me from doing my job and holding this administration accountable. Of course, the president isn't the only critic out there. His son also has been very critical of you on Twitter, putting out a tweet uh, referencing the Loch Ness monster and saying that you have a uh, leading a tinfoil hat brigade. Uh, the president's counselor, Kellyanne Conway, accusing you of being a liar. Here's what she had to say. Adam Schiff should resign. He has no right as somebody who has been peddling a lie day after day after day, unchallenged, unchallenged and not under oath. So when, when you hear that, when you first heard the summary of the Mueller report in the Barr letter, was there any part of you that thought, maybe I've gone too far, maybe I owe the president an apology? Uh, well, first of all, in terms of uh, Don Jr. or Kellyanne Conway, any day that I'm attacked by the likes of them is probably a very good day for me. Uh, after all, uh, this is the inventor of alternate facts, and she's producing some new alternate facts uh, this week. Um, look, what I have said all along, and Alex, uh, I've said this probably dozens of times uh, publicly on television, perhaps even on your show as well, that the evidence of collusion is in plain sight. Uh, but whether that evidence rises to the level of proof beyond a reasonable doubt of criminal conspiracy would be something that Bob Mueller would have to decide. Uh, and I would respect, and I do respect his judgment. Uh, but let me just tell you what some of that evidence is. Um, and, and this pertains to one of the people you brought up, uh, Don Jr. The Russians, through an intermediary, offered dirt on Hillary Clinton to the Trump campaign, something it said was part of the Russian government's effort to help the Trump campaign. And what did Don Jr. do when he received this overture? Did he call the FBI? No. Did he rebuff them and say, under no circumstances? No. His response was, I would love it. If it's what you say it is, that is of a highly sensitive and secret nature, uh, dirt on Hillary by the Russian government, if it's what you say it is, I would love it. Uh, and then he went and set up a meeting in Trump Tower. Uh, the campaign chairman, Paul Manafort, thought it was worth his attending that meeting to get that dirt, as did Jared Kushner. Uh, and then they lied about it. They concealed the meeting when it was discovered uh, Don Jr. and reportedly his father produced this false statement um, to try to cover up that meeting, that evidence of collusion. Uh, but I'll also point out that Paul Manafort, we know, and again, this is part of the public record, Paul Manafort provided uh, information or offered to provide information to a Russian oligarch, Oleg Deripaska, in exchange for money or the forgiveness of debt. Uh, he offered polling data to someone linked to Russian intelligence. The National Security Advisor, Mike Flynn, secretly had conversations with the Russian ambassador to undermine bipartisan sanctions and lied about it. The president himself called on the Russians to hack his opponent's emails. And later that day, the Russians, the GRU, the same people responsible for that social media campaign, hearing him, did try to hack some of those servers. This is just a partial list. Your show would need to be longer for me to go through all of it. But again, what I have said all along is that 
This is evidence of corrupt behavior. Yes, it is evidence of collusion. But whether it rises to a prosecutable offense, proof beyond a reasonable doubt of the elements of criminal conspiracy is for Bob Mueller to decide. Uh, and I welcome the report. Uh, I'm urging that that report be made public in its entirety. It is the president and his attorney general uh, who appear not to want that to happen uh, and who are delaying the release of that. And if they have such confidence that this exonerates them, even though Mr. Mueller said it does not, then let them support the effort to make every word of it public. And what we know so far is that Mueller said that uh, that, that, that did not establish the conspiracy, which does not mean that there was no evidence of a conspiracy. It just means that he did not believe that there was enough evidence for a criminal prosecution. Why do you think that is? Why do you think, given all of what you just said, that they're, they aren't going forward with some sort of prosecution? Well, Alex, you're exactly right. And, and herein lies the difference between corrupt behavior and something that you can prove beyond a reasonable doubt is a violation of the law. It's a pretty high burden of proof uh, to show each of the elements of a criminal conspiracy. Uh, not even Don Jr. is likely to sign his name to a written contract saying, I hereby accept the help of the Russian government and here's how I'm going to coordinate. Um, you generally need, frankly, recordings of participants in a conspiracy or some other very demonstrable um, uh, proof of that nature. Now, those communications, those written emails, are direct evidence, but nonetheless, uh, it is a high bar. And so, Mr. Mueller, who I respect a great deal, and I think the country owes him a great debt of gratitude, decided that he could not persuade a jury of this beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, but let's see that evidence, because each of the things I mentioned, Alex, I would assume will be discussed in the report, uh, and all they're relying on right now is Mr. Barr's summary. So you, you mentioned uh, what your past statements, including some of your past statements on this show. We want to go back to May 4th, uh, which was our first show when we talked to you and asked you what you would do as chairman of the House Intelligence Committee. Here's what you said. Well, the first thing that we would do is we would release all the transcripts of the interviews that we've done so far. The Republicans committed to doing this, but I knew that they wouldn't fall through because those transcripts both reveal evidence of collusion and obstruction of justice, but they also reveal the degree to which Republican colleagues on the Intelligence Committee were never serious about the investigation, ignored plain evidence of collusion, wouldn't allow us to bring in key witnesses. So what's next for this investigation? Are you going to release transcripts that show direct evidence of collusion, and when is that going to happen? Uh, we are, Alex, and we have continually pressed the intelligence community, which is in the process of reviewing those transcripts for any classified information, to give us the green light to redact anything that's classified, to allow us to make the public release. Uh, and they have continued to push back and say they're not done, they need more time. We're going to continue to ride them until we get that done. Uh, we have sought to have them prioritize and accelerate certain transcripts so we don't have to wait for all of them to be done. Uh, they have resisted that effort, but we will be releasing all the transcripts. All of those are going to come out uh, in time when they're finished. Uh, and, and I think you will see when you read those transcripts just how fundamentally unserious uh, my GOP colleagues were about the investigation. Is impeachment now off the table? Uh, look, I've always said, uh, and I wrote an op-ed on the subject, I think a year ago in the New York Times, that um, Democrats should not take the bait on impeachment. We should wait until the investigation is concluded. We should wait till we see and read the Mueller report. That is still my view. Uh, I think that the bar for impeachment is very high. Uh, it would have to be a bipartisan process, uh, and, uh, and the likelihood of the Republican members of the Senate um, deeming this president's conduct, uh, almost no matter how egregious it is, as uh, declaring him unfit for office or constituting high crimes and misdemeanors, that is obviously a very high bar. So again, I think we wait to see the evidence, but I think that unless it is so graphic and compelling that it would earn bipartisan support, uh, there's no put point in putting the country through a failed impeachment. Have you gotten any sense from, from the Attorney General, and I know your colleague, uh, Congressman Nadler, who runs the uh, Judiciary Committee, is working on this as well, when you might actually see the Mueller report? Well, apparently the Attorney General has said that it will be weeks, but not months. Uh, but here's the thing. This Attorney General 
who applied for the job by writing a 19-page legal diatribe uh, against the Mueller investigation, in particular the obstruction of justice case. Uh, this attorney general promised that he would be as transparent as possible, that he would release as much of that report as he could consistent with law and policy. Well, Alex, that means all of it. It means every word of it. Um, the, the attorney general is apparently taking the position that he can't release grand jury material. Uh, that's a dodge. Uh, after the Watergate investigation, that grand jury material with court permission was provided to the Congress. That needs to happen here. Uh, and instead of fighting that or redacting that, the Attorney General should seek court permission to do that. Uh, that was consistent with what he pledged uh, when he was confirmed, that he would be as transparent as possible. But that does not appear to be where he is headed. So we're going to have a fight, it looks like. But that's a fight we're going to win. Uh, they're not going to be able to bury this report. And again, if they're so confident in what it says, if they're so confident he's been exonerated, uh, notwithstanding uh, Mueller's explicit uh, statement, apparently, that he has not been exonerated, then that evidence needs to come out and the public should see it. Uh, this week, the White House put out a memo to news organizations, including ours, uh, urging us not to book people like you on our show, uh, saying that uh, essentially you're not worth talking to. Um, what do you make of that? Well, look, it's part of a consistent pattern um, of excluding reporters from the White House press pool, of really effect effectively doing away with White House pre press briefings, uh, except under extraordinary circumstances, of labeling the press as the enemy of the people. Um, and I will add to that the reports uh, of a week or two ago that the president was urging members of his staff to tell the Justice Department to hold up the merger of the parent of CNN because he didn't like CNN's coverage, uh, or other allegations that the president was secretly meeting with the postmaster general to browbeat the postmaster into raising postal rates on Amazon as a way of punishing Jeff Bezos and the Washington Post. This is a president trying to silence his critic, uh, silence media organizations, silence members of Congress, silence any opposition. It is what you see autocrats around the world doing, and indeed, Autocrats are following his example. You have dictators like Bashar al-Assad, you have others uh, like Turkey's Erdogan or Duterte in the Philippines uh, making the claim that you can't watch CNN because it's fake news or making the argument that their press is the enemy of the people. Instead of our president being held up as a champion of press freedom, he is being held up by autocrats around the world. Uh, and obviously we're going to fight back. Uh, good luck. Uh, to you, uh, Mr. President, in trying to silence the media or members of Congress. We are going to hold you accountable. That is our constitutional obligation in Congress, and that is the fundamental responsibility of the press. Well, and, and all sides are welcome on our show. We appreciate you coming on our show in the past. And for people that are just getting to watch our show for the first time in Northern California, uh, we like to have a little bit of fun uh, and get to know people as well. So, Congressman, I know it's been a crazy week for you, but we're going to hopefully smile for a moment. Uh, we have a new game called Either Or. Uh, this is where you get an opportunity to pick either this or that. So we're, and, and, and this has a Northern California theme uh, this week. So here we go. You ready? Uh, the I'm first ready. question is uh, Golden Gate Bridge or 405 Freeway in rush hour? Oh, jeez. Oh, God. Um, I think I'd rather walk, but uh, I guess not knowing the bridge, I'll pick the bridge because I know the 405 is a disaster. Yeah, well, everybody loves the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, Willie Mays or Sandy Koufax? Uh, well, I got to meet Sandy Koufax. I'm going to have to go with Sandy Koufax. Okay. Uh, Ghirardelli or Seize Candy? Oh, that was easy, Ghirardelli. There you go. There's some love from NorCal there. Uh, Napa <laughs> or French wine? Oh, please, they're getting easier all the time. Uh, definitely Napa. Uh, 49ers or Raiders? Oh, well, that is also easy for me. Oakland Raiders, wherever they end up, I'm an Oakland Raider fan. Win or lose, and it's been mostly lose. But I'm very optimistic about the coming season. Yeah, well, soon to be the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, and then uh, Frank Sinatra or Tony Bennett? Oh, well, I'm a, quite a diehard Sinatra fan, so I'm going to go with uh, Frank Sinatra. Well, you know, he's also sung I Left My Heart in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> Most people think of it as Tony Bennett, but there's a great version from Sinatra, which we're listening to now. Uh, so we will say thank you, uh, Congressman, with that. And uh, your playout song today is uh, Old Blue Eyes.
Excellent. Congressman Schiff, thank you so much.